Welcome to a presentation by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education on the DNA microarray fabrication processes. In this presentation, we're going to review three processes used to fabricate DNA microarrays. To learn even more about DNA microarrays, be sure to check out the other presentations that we have. The first one is called an Introduction to DNA Microarrays and introduces the microarray as well as some of its applications. And then we have a second presentation called How Does a Microarray Work? Remember that a DNA microarray consists of thousands of features, addresses, or spots, each containing hundreds of oligonucleotides, or oligos for short, of the same gene. This graphic illustrates one feature of a DNA microarray expanding from its source, which contains thousands of other features. This particular feature shows a unique oligo or DNA sequence. These oligos are called probes. Other features on the array have different sequences and thus are probing for different genes. One microarray can test for thousands of different genes simultaneously. So how do we make multiple gene sequences or oligos within one feature while simultaneously making different sequences on other features? following are brief overviews of three different methods. One way we do this is to use the same technology that is used in inkjet printers. Here we have a graphic of one type of inkjet printhead with a reservoir and channels. In each channel there is a piezoelectric crystal that is energized to pull ink from the reservoir, then de-energized to allow ink to move into the channel where it is deposited on paper. For each reservoir, there are several nozzles that allow for the deposit of ink in several locations simultaneously. This microarrayer is used for DNA microarrays. Here we have eight nozzles. This type of process is also referred to as non-contact printing. In a microarrayer, the ink is a solution with millions of single nucleotides. There are four ink reservoirs, each containing a different nucleotide. The printhead deposits specific nucleotides at specific locations in a specific order, creating the desired nucleotide sequence. Remember that a nucleotide is actually a base, A, T, C, or G, with a sugar and at least one phosphate. This allows for the nucleotides to bond together into a single-stranded chain, creating the desired sequence. This graphic illustrates an oligonucleotide microarray process used by Agilent. In the first graphic, we see non-contact inkjet printing technology delivering a small and accurate volume in the picoliters of nucleotides to the first layer on the microarray substrate, which is usually glass. Once the first nucleotides are deposited on the substrate, then repeated rounds of nucleotides are printed creating specific oligoprobes of the desired length which can be up to 60 nucleotides long. Another process used for DNA microarray is a photolithography process that is somewhat similar to that used to fabricate computer chips. This process was developed by Affymetrix for the gene chip microarray. In this process, a pattern mask and ultraviolet light, UV light, are used to expose specific features of the microarray. The graphic illustrates the UV light, mask, and substrate, which for this type of process is usually silicon. Each square in the mask is a select feature or address in the array. Each of these features can be as small as 5 micrometers or as large as 30 micrometers. Newer technology is enabling feature sizes in the nanoscale. So how does this work? The probe sequences and their locations on the array are identified. Each feature has a different sequence. However, for redundancy and control purposes, some sequences are duplicated, meaning that some features have the exact same DNA sequence. In this particular graphic, the different colors represent features with different sequences. The light colors represent the same DNA sequence. Once the sequences and locations on the array are identified, a set of masks are designed that will create those sequences. Each mask identifies the location of a specific nucleotide in various locations on the array. The first mask 
could be used to identify the initial locations for the nucleotide base A, or adenine. The second mass for the base C, third mask for the base T, and finally base G. The next set of masks would be designed for the second position of each of the nucleotides on the arrays. For an array with probes consisting of three nucleotide bases, on each feature, 12 masks are needed. Prior to starting the fabrication process, four solutions are developed, with each solution consisting of a specific nucleotide, A, T, C, or G. To the end of each nucleotide base, a blocking agent is attached. Now that we have the mask and the base solutions, we're ready for the photolithography process. There are three steps to this photolithography process, protect, deprotect, and add. The attached blocking agent that you saw previously is what we used to protect. Here we have an array that has already had the four bases applied to select locations or features on the substrate. This layer required four masks, one mask for each base. The fifth mask and UV light remove the blocking agent or deprotect specific locations on the array. A solution of A bases with attached blocking agents is washed over the array. The A bases attach to the deprotected bases, providing protection for the next layer. Another mask of UV deprotects specific features on the next layer. A solution of G bases is washed over the array. The G base is attached to the deprotected features. The next mask and UV deprotect features for the next layer. And then a solution of T bases wash over the array. The T base is attached to the deprotected areas and the next mask is applied. A wash of C bases which attach to the unprotected features and this process continues until you have an array with oligos of up to 25 nucleotide bases. The third process that we're going to briefly discuss is the more recent maskless photography process developed by NimbleGen Systems. In this process, digital mirror devices, or DMDs, are used in place of the mask. Here is a micro-sized digital mirror array from a larger array of about a thousand mirrors. These same devices are used in in-focus projectors as well as the large digital projection systems used in movie theaters. Each of the micro-sized mirrors are placed on top of a micro-sized hinge suspended with a torsion spring. Underneath the hinge is an electrode or electromagnet. When the electrode is energized, one side of the hinge is pulled toward the electrode, causing the hinge and thus the mirror to tilt. When the voltage is removed, the torsion spring returns this mirror to home position. Each mirror can be tilted independently of the other mirrors. Just to give you a little perspective, here are the four mirrors you were just looking at, looped inside of a nano-sized wire, which is lying on a strand of hair. So for maskless fabrication of DNA microarrays, we replace all of those masks with one digital mirror device and a light source. Here we have the same DNA microarray that we had before, but now we have replaced the mask with the DMD. A light source is directed to the mirrors. Software is used to program the on-off sequences of the mirrors. Just like in the mask process, a blocking agent is used to protect the substrate. Specific mirrors are tilted to reflect the light onto the substrate surface and deprotect specific features. A base solution is washed over the board. Bases are attached to the unprotected areas, just like before. For each level and for each new base, a new sequence of mirrors are activated or tilted. This new sequence is equivalent to a different mask. So as you can see, the maskless and the mask fabrication processes are essentially the same, except in the maskless system, all of those masks are replaced with one digital mirror array. So to sum this up, three processes are commonly used to fabricate DNA microarray, and they include the non-contact printing system that uses the same technology of inkjet printers, 
a photolithography process that uses a mask and UV light for each level of the oligo sequence, and a photolithography process that uses a digital mirror device rather than mask. Both of the photolithography processes follow three basic steps. Protect the surface with a blocking agent, deprotect specific features on the surface by using UV light to remove the blocking agent, and then add select nucleotides to the unprotected features. These steps are repeated over and over again until the desired length of oligos are fabricated. For more detailed information on DNA microarrays, be sure to download the DNA microarray learning module from the SCME website under Educational Materials.